Hi, my name is Kate Larson, and this is my artist biography video for AP Art History on Edward Hopper. Edward Hopper was born in 1882 in New York in a city on the Hudson, just a little north of New York City, um, to a pretty small family. He just had one sister, Marion, of mid to upper class, so his Dad did pretty well and was able to supply him with any kind of art supplies he needed. Edward started drawing at about five and showing um, interest and skill in his artistic endeavors, uh, which he continued to follow uh, through his teenage years where he did some pretty interesting self-portraits and he did a lot of pen and ink, uh, which he later used in political cartoon work. Um, he did some oil paintings. His mom was pretty um, creative and I think that influenced him and she really fostered his artistic side. And his father was mainly um, intellectual, um, which is probably why um, Edward kind of stayed in high school towards um, being a naval architect. Uh, also because the town that he was from uh, was a yacht building center. So that would make sense that he was kind of partial to that occupation. But once he graduated high school, he declared his intent to pursue an artistic career. Hopper's parents insisted that he studied commercial art um, so that he had a reliable means of income, as most artists, uh, especially of that age, didn't. For his education, Edward attended the New York School of Art and Design, where he studied with teachers such as Impressionist William Merritt Chase and Robert Omri who were members of the nicknamed Ashcan School, a movement that stressed realism in both form and content. And I think part of the reason why I like Edward Hopper so much and what makes him unique is that um, because of his father's interest in French culture, uh, he was exposed to French culture and other European cultures pretty early in life, uh, which later influenced his art particularly in um, the way he found um, a way to blend the light palettes of fresh impressionism with kind of the anonymous, vacant, and like dark and moody tones of the uh, growing realism mo movement in New York City. He was particularly taken with the works of Claude Monet and Edward Manet, um, which I think encouraged him to pursue his work in oil paintings as well as pushed him to hone in his skills in um, drawing light, which was one of the key techniques of the French Impressionist who commonly painted outdoors over extended periods of time, uh, therefore making them masters in capturing light in their paintings. Uh, Edward used the new fluorescent lights of the 40s to cast an eerie glow over many of his nighttime works that featured New York City and became extremely skilled in using natural light in his many coastal landscapes. A little later, Edward Hopper became one of the dearest names in American art history as First Lady Jackie Kennedy chose to display his work, House of Swamp Mud in the White House. Hopper's break into the world of realism influenced later pop art and new realist artists, as well as many photographers in the 1960s and 1970s. Now that we've learned a little bit about Edward Hopper and his early life and career, let's examine nine of my favorite and some of his most famous works. Hopper said that Nighthawks was inspired by a restaurant on New York's Greenwich Avenue where two streets meet. And though his description is simple enough, the art world has long discussed the true meaning behind this famous work. Josephine, Hopper's wife, described Edward's painting process to take about a month and a half for this picture, and stated that both she and Edward were used as models for the painting itself. Josephine as the female subject of the painting, and Edward using his own reflection in a mirror painted as one of the male subjects. Though Hopper denied any implications of the use of symbols of isolation or urban emptiness in this painting, he did acknowledge that in Nighthawks he was, unconsciously, probably painting the loneliness of a large city. This kind of dreariness was carried out in a multitude of his paintings that featured New York City. Automat is a prime example of Hopper's mastery with painting light. Much like in Nighthawks, lights are used to eerily contrast the depth of the black night outside, enhancing the mood of loneliness and isolation. The exclusion of a door or any kind of exit, once again another similarity with Nighthawks, suggests the notion that the woman is trapped in her own despair. New York movie really captures, once again, the emotions towards wealth and luxury that Edward felt. 
This painting depicts a female usher, really his wife Josephine who posed for this painting, mulling over her own thoughts as a movie plays in a lavish looking theater. Edward briefly designed artwork for a few cinematic pieces and was exposed to the world of Hollywood. This painting is perhaps a depiction of Hopper's sentiments towards the movie production world and the emptiness that wealth cannot fill. Night Windows is one of my personal favorites because I love the air of mystery that it suggests. Hopper was an expert in expressing anonymity, which he does specifically in this picture as both the cutaway styled light of the windows against the dark exterior of the building and the lack of a face on the female subject suggest. This painting is also a perfect example of one of Hopper's trademarks, painting a scene just before the action happens. Chop Suey is one of the few Hopper paintings that depicts New York City in daylight. In this painting, I think Hopper showcases his use of light and how the sunlight streams into the windows and how it hits both the white table and the pale skin of the main female subject. Rooms by the Sea is probably my favorite painting by Edward Hopper. This painting features the view from Hopper's secluded studio in Truro that stood on a bluff overlooking the ocean. The use of lighting and shadows, as well as the lack of any subjects in the painting, suggests, once again, Hopper's communication of a feeling of loneliness and detachment. Lighthouse at Two Lights is a wonderful indication of Hopper's ability to paint natural landscapes just as well as the man-made city life scenes of New York City. This painting is perhaps a nod to his coastal childhood, as it features a view of a lighthouse in Maine, where he commonly vacationed during the summer months. The contrast of the lighting used in this picture and the lighting used in, say, Nighthawks, suggests that Maine was a pleasurable retreat from life in New York for Edward. The Long Lake is a graceful, serene testament to Hopper's nautical upbringing. This painting expresses Hopper's attachment to the sea, as well as his love of sailing and the solitude that it provides. The cool tones and sense of peace depicted in this work highlights the contrast between the dramatic, jewel-toned reds and greens commonly used by Hopper when painting New York City. I like to think that Railroad Sunset is one of Hopper's best works. Inspired by a transcontinental railroad trip, Hopper painted this once he had returned to his New York studio, using both his memory of real-life details and his imagination to create the piece. I think it's a perfect metaphor for his life as it depicts a lonely signal tower against a deep sunset. Although this transcontinental railroad would be thought to inspire unity and a sense of connectedness, this painting evokes a mood of detachment and melancholic reflection. Edward Hopper enjoyed many vacations and summers on the East Coast with his wife, Josephine. And as he got older, he started to paint more and more of those coastal landscapes, and less and less as they spent less time in New York City. Um, his health started to falter uh, as he got older, and throughout many surgeries and medical problems, he still produced some um, great works. And uh, throughout the Great Depression, he actually fared better than many other artists at the time. Um, both the Whitney Museum of American Art and the Metropolitan Museum of Art paid thousands of dollars for his works. Um, he sold 30 paintings alone around that time, uh, including 13 watercolors, uh, in addition to his usual oil paintings. Um, and after his medical and um, other health problems became too much, unfortunately, Edward Hopper died in Washington Square, New York City, May 15th, 1967. Uh, leaving his wife, Josephine, uh, who died 10 months after. Uh, she bequeathed their joint collection of more than 3,000 works to both the Whitney Museum of American Art and the Museum of Modern Art in New York. In terms of Edward's contributions to the art world, I think his lasting legacy was um, kind of revolving around the modernist movement in literature that happened uh, around the same time that Edward kind of hit his stride. Um, the same way that modernism um, provided a new approach at literature, um, Edward kind of provided his own um, means of realism for American art, uh, in which the subjects turned from uh, things like flowers or, or abstract um, dreamlike uh, landscapes or people uh, to very real and very like intimate and um, kind of moody pieces that portrayed uh, real life and um, kind of transformed art from something that was uh, detached from society into something that actually depicted and illustrated everyday society. 
Who was Edward Hopper? Um, Edward Hopper was a very introverted and introspective man who uh, loved his wife Josephine very much. In fact, most of their disputes were just over the fact that Josephine gave more attention to their cat Arthur sometimes than she did to Edward. And he paved the way for modern art, uh, and he expertly combined the ways of the old uh, with his own new unique sense of art.